a lot of NHL superstars have left their mark on the game, breaking records and cementing themselves into the NHL's history books. But that's not what this video is going to be about. In this video, we're going to be highlighting the strangest, most bizarre records to ever be recorded in the NHL. We're talking about records you didn't even know existed. So let's jump right into it. Here are the top six strangest NHL records. Patrick Seeloff. Two goals, two teams, two shots. Patrick is currently playing professional hockey in Europe, but before he made it there, Patrick Seeloff had an interesting run in the NHL. He was drafted 42nd overall by the Calgary Flames in 2012 and never cracked the NHL roster until April 9th, 2016, which was the last game of the regular season. In this game, not only did Patrick score, but he scored the game-winning goal on the only shot he took in the entire game. The back end, scores, deflected in! Patrick Seeloff makes it 2-1 Calgary and saved that puck. That's his first National Hockey League goal. In the upcoming offseason, he was traded to the Ottawa Senators for Alex Chason. And unfortunately for Patrick, he was basically blacklisted in the organization due to essentially ending the career of Clark MacArthur in a preseason scrimmage. Because of this hit, Patrick Seeloff didn't see any ice time with the Senators until a season and a half later when he was called up for one game against the Florida Panthers on March 20th, 2018. The Sens lost the game 7-2, but Seeloff did it again. The outside of the post bounces in! Patrick Seeloff scores! For shoulder, see so the side of the net, off the back wall, over the net from the top. And shoulder, and why not? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me now? On his only shot of the game, he scored another goal, making his overall stats in his NHL career two games with two different teams and two goals scored. He never played in the NHL again, making this a very bizarre record that will most likely never be matched or broken. Frederick Anderson, top 10 Danish highest scorer to ever play in the NHL. Freddy is one of the league's top goaltenders, well, if he can stay healthy. But what most people don't know is that he's a top 10 scorer in the league too. Well, top 10 for Danish players at least. With 445 games played, Anderson has 13 assists and 13 overall points, making him number 10 on the list. This won't last forever, Freddy, so either step it up and start scoring some more goals or be prepared to lose that number 10 spot. Either way, Still such a bizarre record to hold. Ken Doherty, the overtime hat trick. Now a quick show of hands, how many of you know the name Ken Doherty? Now I can't really see if you put your hand up, but I'm just guessing you don't know the name. And don't worry, you're not alone there. Born in 1905 and playing in the NHL from 1926 to 1937, it makes sense for you not to recognize his name. Also, Ken only played 105 games in the NHL, notching 15 goals and 26 assists throughout his pro career. So you're not wrong for not remembering him. Now we all know that overtime in the NHL is a do or die situation. First goal wins and you're sitting on the edge of your seat the entire time watching break after break, hoping for a big save or a big goal. But back in 1934, this was not the case. Back then, there was no sudden death overtime. Instead, the two teams would play for another full 10 minutes, and regardless of how many goals were scored, whoever was winning by the end of the 10 minutes won the game. On January 16, 1934, Toronto Maple Leafs Ken Doherty made NHL history by scoring a hat-trick in the 10-minute overtime against the Ottawa Senators, taking the W after a 7-4 win. And because OT will never be like this again, Doherty's record will forever be untouched. Unless the NHL for some reason brings it back. But even then, if they did, a hat trick in 10 minutes of play is extremely tough to beat. Sean Podine, 2001 Stanley Cup champion. Now this record is so bizarre, I couldn't believe it when I read it. Sean Podine was a part of the Colorado Avalanche 2001 Stanley Cup team. And the way he decided to celebrate was unlike any other cup celebration we've ever seen. After winning the cup, Avalanche forward Podine decided to spend the next 25 hours 
fully equipped. And by that, I mean he literally did not take his equipment off. Uh, that's about 23 hours in. I had just probably finished taking the water hose to cool myself off because I was overheating. When asked about it, he answered, it was a triple dog dare, I had to do it. And I don't know about you, but I for one respect the hell out of that. It's hard enough to turn down a triple dog dare on a regular day, but after winning the cup, you're flying high. If it was me, I would have done the same thing. Sean took it as far as wearing the equipment in bed when he went to sleep. He says, I just saw it as a challenge, something fun to do because we just won the Stanley Cup. It was 20% funny and 80% dumb. Well, Sean, that may be the case, but it's also 100% a record that will never be broken. I mean, who the heck is dumb enough to even want to try it? Ron Hextall's penalty minutes. There's a lot we can say about Ron Hextall. He's had an amazing and impressive career as an NHL goalie. In the 1987-88 season, Ron became the first goalie in history to ever score a goal. Look to shoot it to the open net. He has scored! The first goaltender to actually score a goal. And on top of that, he was the first goalie to ever record a playoff goal. He's got a chance. He's got yeah. it! Yes, sir! Ron forever changed the way the goalie position is played with his amazing puck handling capabilities and even holds the record for points by a goalie with 28 points. But with all of that being said, that is not why he ended up on our list. Hextall was quite the aggressive goalie and that is exactly why he is on our list. Ron Hextall holds the NHL record for most penalty minutes in a single season by a goalie. Throughout his career, he recorded 476 penalty minutes, and just in the 88-89 season alone, he recorded 113 of those minutes. Ron Hextall is easily one of the most entertaining NHL goalies we'll ever see. From his offensive touch to never shying away from the rough and gritty part of the game, the man's a beauty and honestly, he deserves his own separate video where we just sit down and watch all of his highlights. If you want to see that video, hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below. Nathan Horton's last NHL goal. Although his career was cut short due to a career ending back injury, Nathan Horton still had a great run in the NHL with over 200 goals and 400 points in 9 seasons. In 2014, Horton was playing for the Blue Jackets. Facing off against the Dallas Stars, Horton scored the first goal of the game to take a 1-0 lead. Four minutes after he scored, Dallas Stars' Rich Peverly collapsed on the bench due to an irregular heartbeat. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Oh right, we did a video on this actually called Near Death Moments in the NHL. When you're done watching this video, actually, you can just go on and click on that video and give it a watch. And while you're at it, if you're not subscribed, just subscribe to the channel. It helps us and it motivates us to make great content and continue this channel. So with Peverly collapsing, everyone was shaken up and it was decided to finish the game on a later date. The game was moved to April 9th, 2014, and the two teams played a full 60-minute game all over again, but Horton's goal still remained, so the Blue Jackets started with a 1-0 lead. So flash forward to April 8th, a day before the rescheduled game, the Blue Jackets were playing Phoenix, and only playing 5 minutes, Horton had to leave the game due to a back injury. And that game was the last time Horton ever suited up, in the NHL. So the next day on April 9th, Horton was not in the lineup, but his goal remained on the score sheet. That's right, without even recording a shot on goal or even playing in the game, Horton is the only player to score in a game in which he did not play in. On top of that, he's also the only player to score in a game that occurred after his final NHL game. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.